Deep Dive with David Stendhal, where we trade without ego, no emotion, no greed, no opinion. Before we begin tonight's video blog, please read over our trading disclaimer, and remember to trade smart and accept the reality that trading futures is risky. This presentation does not provide buy-sell recommendations, and our information is strictly provided for educational purposes only. As always, trade at your own risk and analysis. Hey, it's David Stenner with tonight's Deep Dive. It is January 10th, 2018, and I thought I'd take a look at the uh, the S&P 500 here today with the ETF being SPY. We have the short, intermediate, and long-term trends all pointing to the upside, but we've got a mixed technical rating on the S&P, and we have uh, the seasonal tendencies. The outlook to the market uh, is a little more bearish, at least for the, the coming two weeks or so. I'll show you a chart on that. But what has happened is we had a rocket on our power level uh, indicator trigger today, as well as if we take a look at our deep dive and we could pull down the, um, the patterns, we also had a surge high that occurred today in the S&P 500. Zero meaning today and the high obviously is a, uh, uh, the market's gotten a little bit of a head of set on the, the, the long side. So Let's take a look at the, the S&P 500 as an example. And we'll first take a look uh, down here at the lower portion here. This is daily bars up, up, and away for the S&P 500. Um, but we did have a power level uh, pivot that uh, triggered here, which is a tendency for the market to uh, to be cautious, especially in the S&P 500. Obviously, it only goes up, as everybody knows, but uh, you should be cautious in your investments if you're adding to positions, things of that nature. Um, our systems are actually flat, so they're not necessarily going short just yet. If the market really starts to rally to the downside, then obviously we might uh, uh, take a position. Um, but uh, as of right now, uh, this is more of a, an overview of what the S&P has done and the fact that uh, this is not an opportunity, uh, at least uh, today and uh, uh, looking at tomorrow, as an opportunity to, uh, to potentially go long the market. Uh, just a cautionary note here. So here's the power level. It did trigger today. And if we take a look at uh, our patterns, this little check mark, or I should say this little plus line, this uh, red, that's where the uh, the market has shown that it has uh, gotten ahead of itself and uh, there should be some profit taking from, from that side. If we take a look at the, the website, what we want to do is take a look at uh, the seasonal tendencies and if we take a look at a five-year chart, market basically is just simply going sideways up until mid-February or so. But if we look at a longer term chart, uh, you'll see that uh, when we get into uh, basically where we are right now into with some volatility but at least into the tail end of January and it starts to sputter around and then obviously maybe around February 1st we have a little bit of a surge another sideways action and that the, the the big money as of late uh, is uh, where the market's been uh, rallying uh, from March up until um, early May or so but you can see that a trend typically does emerge uh, in the early part of the year, but we're just simply not there just yet. So how are things being worked at right now uh, with all of the systems? Uh, this is as of basically almost 5 o'clock. I'm doing this a little after 5 o'clock right now, but the, the S&P 500 is flat. There's nothing uh, to this particular bar here. You can see from the Russell and the Dow Jones that we actually are long. Uh, one system in the uh, the Russell and two in the, uh, the the Dow Jones. I don't spend a lot of time on this breakdown of the systems if we're long, short, or hedged. So I thought I would show this. If you're, I'm stating the obvious, but uh, uh, you'll see on the hedge side that, that there's a little bit of explanation that uh, is involved here. The tan uh, bars, if we're pointed to the right, that means we're long and depending upon how far to the right we are, depends upon how many systems we actually have that are along the market at that particular time. The gray bars, same thing, but on the short side, depending upon how far they go to the left, that will dictate uh, how strongly we are uh, short the market. Uh, when we start dealing with the, I know it's kind of hard to distinguish here, but the blue and the 
uh, I'll call this the orange, uh, those represent situations where we're hedged. Hedged meaning that uh, we use platinum as an example. We have two that are long and one that is short. So we're net long one, but the chart wants to provide all of the information. So net net, we're long, but we're barely long with a hedged position. Corn, uh, on the up, on the flip side, uh, we have two that are short and one that is long. And when it comes time to to deal with that, you'd have to go into the uh, into the specifics of the 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 market to see which systems are long or short, uh, what their time frames are. Uh, in many instances, like a weekly system could be long or a daily system could be long, and we have two short-term systems, like a 60 and a 90-minute system that might be short the market. Hence, what you have is a protection for a little bit of a sell-off uh, based upon a longer-term perspective, the weekly system being long the market. So when you look at this chart, the um, the easiest way to understand that is you're just simply trying to get an idea are we long or are we short the market and if there's some type of an hedge uh, what's what's taking place here you can see from cotton we have three systems that are long and one that is short we're, we're trying to uh, uh, get the systems to unwind the longs and uh, go short the market given what's been uh, taking place there uh, but it just gives no indication of the profitability of the systems, how long they've been long or short the market. It's just a snapshot, but I thought I would at least nonetheless kind of show that information to you. Uh, the other thing that I'll show to you is uh, if ever you're looking to find a good market to trade or a market that has trading qualities to it, uh, you can click on our market grades and what we do is we grade all of the markets, there's uh, quite a few of them here, 23 in, in total across eight different sectors. Uh, take a look here at the, the equities uh, where we have the Russell that is uh, a gray, it's basically a, a C market. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's not the easiest market to trade, but it's not a bad market to trade. But as of late, the S&P and the Dow Jones have been uh, very good with the yellow grades, meaning A grades. And we'll give you a little number here. And basically what we do is we weight all of the markets against one of them uh, against themselves. And it's not the market itself, it's the system's ability to consistently, that's the appropriate word, consistently trade the market. The more consistent it is over time, not changing variables, not having to, uh, to toss out systems and replace them with other systems. What I'm talking about is an individual system's ability to maintain itself uh, with subtle differences over time. Uh, those are the systems that give a, a higher weighting. Uh, think of that as a test or a quiz, since we're using gradings, uh, for the individual market. And because we deal with so many different systems, 375 different systems across all of the markets, we can uh, be able to calibrate the market and get an idea as to how it actually trades with uh, pattern-based systems, momentum-based systems, trend-based systems, their consistencies across the different time frames, 45, 60, 90-minute bars, 120, 240-minute bars, daily and weekly systems. All of that combines together based upon the individual markets, their trading style, and their um, ability to consistently trade over time, that's where these numbers come from. So if we take a look at um, grains as an example, corn has been a difficult market to trade based upon our systems. Uh, soybeans uh, is more of a B, uh, higher B, and uh, wheat 99.8, weighted across all of the markets, uh, it's actually an A market. So when you're looking for a market to trade, you may want to take a look at our market grades, and then you can take a look at all of the individual markets that we actually have there. So I thought I'd at least share that with you. Uh, the, the final thing that I'll mention is that uh, we put out our uh, quarterly newsletter. It's more of a report, if you will, because there's there's a lot of pages to it. Um, and if you come to the video blog, which is, if you're viewing this, you've probably uh, or have come to this page. If you go and click on the uh, winter 2017-18 uh, seasonal outlook, what you'll get is a page that looks like this. And we're going to look at the seasonal turning points for whatever markets uh, look attractive from a seasonal basis uh, going into the third, excuse me, the first quarter. And it's those that have seasonal opportunities. I, I'm not saying that uh, there's not big trends that can emerge, but it's those that have consistent pops 
tradable opportunities, not trends, not long-term investments. What I'm talking about are tradable opportunities over January, February, March of the, the calendar year. And the, what you would do is you, you can see which markets we've analyzed, which ones we're actually looking at. And if you just simply come to the, the download page, you'll see the, uh, the seasonal trading outlook. Uh, you'll see that, uh, Myself and Robert Molnar, uh, we we put this thing together, and this is the the winter 2018 uh, uh, period. And uh, you can scroll down. You can see all the different markets. A little description. Uh, if we scroll down. You'll see there's a number of pages here as I going through all of these different uh, separate markets. Uh, and what you'll see is the seasonal opportunities where I was talking about. You can read over the newsletter to get a feel for why it is we selected certain markets to be incorporated into the newsletter. All of that information is updated on the website, but it's also in here so that you know why it is that we selected those markets. Uh, we do that for January, February, and March. And then at the tail end, uh, uh, I'm just giving an indication as to uh, the markets and alternative investments that you you can take. So if you're not necessarily a futures trader and you'd prefer to trade the ETFs uh, or the ETNs, we'll give you a selection of markets that you may want to, uh, uh, to, to look at. So that will at least give you an idea as to uh, uh, something new that's been uh, added to the, uh, to the process. And we'll do these things on a quarterly basis. So obviously we're going to follow the seasons. The next one obviously will be spring. And uh, we'll do that um, obviously in a couple of months or so. But uh, for all intents and purposes, that will at least give you an idea. So just watch the S&P. Uh, concern yourself with the technical ratings, that seasonal tendency of the market to basically sell off into the latter part of January and uh, look for uh, better trading opportunities. And obviously with the rocket and the uh, uh, the uh, the process that I was talking about here with the uh, uh, the surge that occurred here today, profit taking is probably not a bad thing if you're long the market, which is what the high represents, and we'll look for a better opportunity to uh, uh, maybe put some um, IRAs to work, uh, add to your 401ks, things of that nature, and the S&P 500. But uh, according to the tools that we have right now, there's better opportunities uh, coming up in a couple of weeks or so. So that will at least give you an idea. I appreciate you watching. We'll take a look at some more markets and some more things that we keep uh, adding to the uh, the website. If uh, you could, I'm always looking for suggestions uh, to add new things to the website, new ways to uh, articulate certain uh, charts and graphs, uh, things of that nature. So if you have an opportunity, I certainly would appreciate any type of feedback. Just come to our contact page, send me a note saying that you like something, you don't like something, you want to add something, you want to uh, improve something, whatever the case may be. But uh, we do like uh, uh, some uh, some feedback. So uh, I can either send you a, um, uh, a survey monkey that will uh, give you an idea of some of the things that we're looking for as far as feedback, or you can just go to the contact page and just let me know uh, what you like or don't like. So I appreciate it, and we'll take a look at another market tomorrow. Thanks. Bye-bye.